Hello everybody, Calamity here, or at least that's what they put in the credits. Today's video is going to be up about the current weapon banner that is going on right now, along with uh, Kinich, Kinichi and Raiden Shogun's reruns as well. So I wanted to take some time to talk about both weapons, because this is an insanely good weapon banner, and I feel like it's important to discuss it. Also important to note, if you guys don't know yet, uh, ever since the 5.0 update, it only costs one fate point to get your desired weapon now instead of two. Meaning that the weapon banner is pretty much the same as a character banner now. So you keep pulling uh, until you get a five star, you either get the weapon you want or you don't. And then if you lost your 50-50, then the next time you get a five star, it will 100% be the weapon that you chose in the fate system. So make sure you pick the weapon that you want as your guaranteed weapon before you start pulling, not after. Now, with that being said, let's take a look at the five star weapons in more detail and then I'll share some character suggestions that you might not have thought of and then we'll quickly go over the four stars as well. So let's start with the Fang of the Mountain King. This is Kirishi's signature weapon. It is a claymore with crit rate as a subset. So right off the bat, this is already a decent stat stick for a lot of claymore DPS characters or sub DPS characters. If you're trying to go for the Engulfing Lightning, i.e. Raiden Shogun's weapon, and you get this instead, I honestly don't think it's the end of the world. This is actually a pretty decent weapon, but let's take a look at what the effect does. It's called Turquoise Hunt. You'll gain a stack of what's called Canopy's Favor after you hit an opponent with your elemental skill, which can be triggered. This effect can be triggered once every half second. After a nearby party member triggers a burning or burgeon, uh, reaction, the equipping character will gain three stacks. This effect can be triggered every two seconds and can be triggered even when the triggering party member is off field. It does say that it has to be a nearby party member, meaning not the person wielding the sword, triggering, burning, or burgeon. So keep that in mind if you want to take advantage of the secondary way of getting um, canopy stacks, uh, canopy favor stacks. Canopy's favorite is an increase to your elemental skill and burst damage by 10% for 6 seconds, and you can have up to 6 stacks. Each stack count is counted, uh, each stack is counted independently. So this is similar to like Yaimiko's signature weapon where you want a character that can spam their elemental skill, or uh, this, this weapon has, having the added condition of triggering burning or burgeon um, as well for stacks while characters will not be able to get the full benefit of this as well as kenichi does um you can still get a couple of stacks and still get like a 20 maybe even 30 percent bonus to your elemental skill and burst damage which honestly that's not bad all right the first character you might not have thought of is actually gaming because he can be put into a burning or burgeon team although he's more popular in the um vaporize team sorry i can remember the name there um however if you decide to go for burning with him and emily you could however take advantage of the weapons effect to its fullest but you can pair him up with a dendro character for an easy four stacks because it's three from from triggering burning and then just do his skill and that's four stacks for 40 percent increased skill and burst damage so that's honestly again really really good for him and it's not a crazy idea to use him in a burning team or just give him like a, again just a, a dendro healer like yao yao or something where he can easily proc burning off of their damage or sorry their application another character that this could be really good for is diluc he'll be able to even take more advantage of the weapons effect if you pair him up with a dendro teammate to again trigger burgeon or burning but he already has three usages of this elemental skill and you're not supposed to spam it right you're you know good diluc players know that you're supposed to space out the elemental usages so you should be able to um get a stack within the um the cooldown so it's it's every half second so you're doing elemental skill normal attack normal attack elemental skill normal attack normal attack elemental skill and that should be enough time for the the uh, stack to reset so you should be able to get three stacks um off of the weapon for the luke and then you can get a 30 percent possibly more boosted burst effect by the time you are done with the full combo so just something to keep in mind as well you don't have to uh, pair him up with a 
Dendro character, if you don't want, just remember you can get 30% just from his elemental skill usage alone. So I thought he was a really good character for this weapon. One more character that I want to recommend that might surprise some of you is actually Eula. Remember that this is a great stat stick, giving her crit rate um, as well. But this is for Eula players out there that do not have her signature weapon. Um, and the reason for that is if you've ever played Eula or you've looked up guides on Eula, you know that you actually use her elemental skill twice uh, in her full combo rotation. So you give her a 20% damage boost to her ult, which is still one of the hardest hitting uh, ultimates in the game. Uh, so honestly, not a bad idea to give to her. And that's going to be it for my character recommendations for the Fang of the Mountain King. Now, just because I didn't mention a character does not mean it's not good for them or like I YouTuber, you totally forgot this and that character. You suck. I'm sorry. There's a lot of characters in this game and we got to keep this video short. So we're going to move on to the next weapon. But yes, there's a ton of characters that this weapon could be good for. If I sat here and talked about each and every single one where this video will be like 30 minutes long and we ain't trying to be here all day. So yes, there are definitely more options out there. I just wanted to give you a few ideas to maybe um, give you some ideas of who to use this on. All right, let's hop back to the other five-star weapon, which is called the Engulfing Lightning, and this is pretty easy to explain weapon. It gives you energy recharge as a substat. Um, it is a pull arm, and at the bottom here, it's called Timeless Stream Eternal Sto Stove. Uh, you're going to get a attack increased of by 28% of your energy recharge over the base of 100. You can gain a maximum bonus of 80% attack, and you gain 30% 30, 30 energy recharge for 12 seconds after you use your elemental burst. Now this weapon, obviously going to be really good for Raiden Shogun. It is her signature weapon, so therefore it is her best weapon. That's obvious. However, this weapon is actually pretty good on a lot of characters, not just Raiden herself. So if you're pulling for a Michi's weapon and you lost your 50-50 and got this instead, you're actually, this is one of the best 50-50s you could lose, honestly. This is a really, really good weapon. Tons of characters will appreciate it. Let's get some of the obvious ones out the way. Yeah, John Ling absolutely will love this weapon. She's a character that you want to build energy recharge for because honestly, without her, her burst, her damage is lacking so outside of her using her burst um it's pretty bad so having a lot of energy recharge giving her a lot of burst uptime is what's going to keep her in the fight dealing a lot of damage all the time and not only that that damage that energy recharge you're getting is being converted into extra damage for you so it's a win-win um that's why a lot of people like hesitate when going for too much energy recharge because it's like uh you need to go for crit rate, crit damage, attack percentage, elements, mastery, all these other stats. And energy recharge? Well, this makes it so that the lack of offensive stats that you end up uh, losing to invest in energy recharge is made up for you. And this is a really, really strong weapon for her. Honestly, one of the best weapons you can give to her um, for best burst uptime as well as damage. Next up is one of the newer characters to come to Genshin, and it's going to be Emily. Emily is actually a character that wants to get her uh, her burst up as fast as you can, because she'll continuously apply her Dendro damage, which you can then burn off of. Basically, you just want to have this up all the time, so energy recharge is going to be good uh, for her, and it's also going to increase her damage at the same time as... Uh, noted before so it, it the weapon just turns energy recharge into damage basically and this is really really good for that um not much else to say um she's a great dps burning like a burning dps um and if you want to give her a weapon maybe you missed out on her signature weapon this weapon is honestly not a bad option for her it's been a long time since we've seen a shenha rerun you know i i know i know but that being said, for those of you that do have her, the Engulfing Lightning is honestly a really good weapon for her because remember it said that energy recharge that you're giving her is converted into attack. That's right, straight up attack percentage and that is exactly what Shenho wants um, 
That's like her most valued stat so that she can provide even more damage to your cryo DPS. So you're not losing anything by investing in energy recharge um, for your Shenha. And of course her burst uptime will be more efficient, which is really, really good. Don't forget supports like Toma can also take advantage of the engulfing lightning now as well. With uh, Toma's case, because of the attack percentage you're getting, the off-field damage that he does from his burst will also do more damage as well as have better uptime. So again, you're seeing the same thing being repeated over and over again. So yeah, there's a lot of characters that can use this from main DPSs, sub DPSs, or just straight up supports who you want to contribute even more damage um, as well. So all of these characters are great for the engulfing lightning. There's no reason why they can't use it. And again, it's really, really strong. There's actually one more character I wanted to do add before I move on to the 4-star weapons, and that's going to be Chevreuse. The Engulfing Lightning is honestly going to be one of the best weapons you can give her if you want her to do damage as well as still be a good support because the Energy Recharge is going to make sure her burst is up all the time, and obviously turning that Energy Recharge into damage is actually going to make her, you know, pretty, pretty valuable to your team, and she's going to make a decent contribution to your DPS. So, really strong weapon for her with the Chevreuse mains out there. And that's going to be it for my recommendation for Engulfing Lightning characters. Hopefully this was, uh, you know, good knowledge for you to understand how good this weapon is. Just how versatile it can be uh, in the hands of so many characters. Now quickly, we're going to go over the 4-star weapons of the banner. Um, we've gone over these multiple times in the past, but you might be new, so that's okay. We're going to go over each one and talk about just a few characters uh, that can take advantage of these. Um, we're going to go over these much faster than the five-star ones, though. All right, the Sacrificial Sword has a chance to reset your elemental skill cooldown at a chance of 40%. This can be higher if you get more refinements, which is easy to do. If you pull on, even without pulling on a weapon banner, chances are you might have gotten a Sacrificial Sword um, just from your character pulls or your standard banner pulls as well. So you never know. That being said, this weapon is fantastic for support uh, off-field DPS characters. Jing Cho being, this is honestly his best weapon, his best free-to-play weapon for sure. Not just him, but Traveler as well, if you use any version of Traveler. Uh, just being able to use your skill twice can generate so much particles for not just the character themselves, but for any teammates that share the same element, which is why if you're using Jing Cho with Yelan, they're both getting their burst pretty much every single rotation and it has like 100% uptime all the time because of all of the free energy part particles you're getting. Not only that, you get energy recharge in the sword as well, so it's going to really help you out for meeting those energy recharge requirements for sure. And you can focus more on getting offensive stats. Rain Slasher is the Claymore mainly used for anyone that is building a virgin or a hyper bloom team simply because it gives you elemental mastery as a substat and that is the most important stat for those reactions the weapons effect doesn't really matter too much uh for the um virgin users but if you are hyper bloom i believe this does affect it if you're doing some sort of hyper bloom uh team if the person with the rain slasher is the one triggering it but don't quote me on that either way this is usually put on characters like Razor if you're doing Hyper Burgeon, or Dia if you're doing her as a Burgeon character as well. That being said, you can still use it on characters like Beto uh, for a bit of extra damage if you have nothing else to use. Next up is the Favonius Lance. This is one of the best 4-star weapons in the game. It is used on just about every single support character. Um, if you ever look up a guide, you'll probably hear this name over and over again. Um, what this does is that every time your character crits, you will generate extra elemental particles. And not just the ones that of the uh, the wielder's element, but you get the type of particles that will be efficient for everybody, not just one element. So that's why it's really, really good. And you will be regenerating tons of extra energy. This will lower energy recharge requirements for everyone on the team. Um, this can occur only once every 12 seconds, but once you get more refinements for it, um, you can increase the chance of generating the extra particles by 100% and doing it every, I believe it's uh, 8 seconds or something like that. Like, it's really short, so you'll be generating energy all the time. And this can be done 
even when the character is not on the field. So very, very strong about just about any healer will appreciate um, having this weapon. Uh, you know, like Yao Yao uh, is going to appreciate it. Yun, uh, Yun Jin as well. Bunch of extra energy for her. Toma, who's in the banner. Next up is the Wid Sith. This is a four star catalyst that gives you crit damage. And when the character takes the field, they get one of the following effects. They get either a 60% increase in attack, a 48% increase in all elemental damage, or a 240 increase in elemental mastery. So this weapon is really, really strong for various characters, both main DPSs and sub DPSs. Characters like Wander. Like any catalyst character that's a DPS or a sub DPS can take advantage of the free crit damage and any one of these buffs. Just make sure you, that they uh, take the field every once in a while to to actually get the buff um but remember that once you activate a buff no matter which one it is it'll be active for 10 seconds and then the cooldown will is a whopping 30 seconds so it has a lot of downtime um but this is really good for that first rotation um when fighting like really hard hitting enemies but yeah really really strong weapon I've recommended a bunch to a ton of different characters. Um, very just good weapon to have overall. Uh, last but not least is the Sacrificial Bow. This is the exact same weapon as the, or sorry, the exact same effect as the Sacrificial Sword. Um, so it can also just be used on a ton of supporting characters out there. Again, Diona is a good example. Uh, Siege Win if you have her. Goro can take advantage of this for extra um elemental particles for his better burst uptime like there is a lot of characters that can use this it's great for supports for more burst uptime and that is pretty much it for this video again overall my thoughts on this weapon banner is that it is a really really good weapon banner both of these weapons are actually really strong for various characters and again even though you might not be able to get the maximum value of the fang of the mountain king it's still a really good stat stick by the end of the day, so you can still use it on several different Claymore characters. And again, e even the 4-star uh, weapons that you can pull alongside the 5-stars are all really, really, really good. Used in a lot of, lot of different characters, a lot of different teams, and they're, they're just weapons that are considered honestly best in slot for several of them. So getting some of these weapons on your account in your armory is going to do you so much favors for this game moving forward. Um, and that's just my two cents. If you have any comments or questions about the weapons in the banner, um, feel free to ask me in the comments. I'm going to do my best to answer you. Other than that, don't forget to leave a like and or subscribe to the channel if this was helpful. And I'll see you all in the next video.